Hi everyone, welcome back to COVID Conversations. We are going to talk today about the uh, most recent report by the American Psychological Association, the APA, and um, I'm just gonna go ahead and share my screen. Okay, you can see that? Yes, I can. All right. So um, the APA essentially did a, a big survey and asked Americans um, what, what sort of their mental health status was. And it's a, it's a big report they do often called Stress in America, and this is the 2020 report. And so obviously it reflects a lot of stress around the COVID situation. And I thought this was an interesting starting point. So in um, August last year, if you just look at like the economy, people were, you know, less than 50% of people indicated that was a major significant source of stressor in their lives, whereas now up to 70% do. And the results have also dramatically increased in just having work as a stressor. But I also just wanted to talk about this. So following up on what we talked about yesterday with the, the parents and, and experiencing stress related to parenting, these numbers sort of blew me away. Yeah, they're pretty powerful. Like, let's just look at the first one. This, this is the highest number. So 74% of those surveyed are concerned about a family member getting coronavirus. Yeah. That's a lot. I mean, that takes up a lot of your brain space too. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And then the okay. disrupting routines, right? The thing that we've mm -hmm. talked so much about. Look at that. I mean, three quarters of people mm -hmm. experience that as a significant source of stress in their lives. Right. Right. And then as we were talking about parenting a bit yesterday, we looked down a bit further. There's managing distance online learning for their children at 71%. And I think it's also important to note that we're assuming that these things are mutually exclusive, right? So if we were to pile some of these together, the stress of worrying about a family member getting coronavirus plus disruption to routines plus managing distance learning, that that takes it to the next level right and then on top of that right missing out on just life right missing out on milestones mm -hmm. graduations or or moving up ceremonies for kids or just yeah. basic needs right look i mean 70 percent mm -hmm. of people are worried about just getting basic needs like food because mm -hmm. we have so much anxiety around going to the grocery store and doing mm -hmm. those other things that it absolutely affects our overall stress level and this, I feel like that, I'll stop sharing now, and, and you can find this report online at the um, apa.org for anybody who's interested, but boy, when I saw that, I just thought, number one, it helps explain, you know, how I've been feeling, and, uh, really? and also just how my clients have been feeling, and, and I think I had been thinking of it as, like, our general baseline of stress and anxiety is so much higher and that means that we don't have as much room to handle those peaks that come, right? Yeah. The inevitable struggles. Totally. And if we think that 70% are just struggling with basic needs, and we think about in psychology, there's something called Maslow's hierarchy of needs. And at the very bottom of the hierarchy are basic needs. And unless those things are met, we can't even think about higher order things like work and social engagement and our own personal growth and development. It's not even an option. So it makes sense that so many people have been struggling with those things that we just mentioned when their basic needs aren't being met or there's a lot of fear around the ability to meet those needs. Right, and safety, right? And totally. all of us are all hypervigilant. Yes. I mean, just a trip to the grocery store or to the pharmacy to pick up a life-saving medication for a family member is just so draining. People come back needing a, a nap after <laughs> just a trip to the store, right? So we have so much stress and anxiety just doing daily things that no wonder we're all struggling with motivation and productivity and other things. Yeah, and you know, I see signs all over town uh, where I live to stay safe. And I know that that's, that's a message that comes from a really good place. But I think that that can also be stressful because I don't even know what that means. Like, how do I stay safe? So 70% of us are worried about the safety, but we don't even know how to do that. That's right. That's right. And this is so different. You know, I think early on in this um, coronavirus time, I wrote an article about how it's, this is so different than any other experience because there's not like something we can see or fight off or um, avoid even, right? It's like, it just feels invisible. 
and fighting off an invisible enemy is terrifying. Um, it is. Stuff yeah. and nightmares. Definitely is. And it brings a lot of that fear. And we know that when we get into the fear response, that's the stress response, that's anxiety, that's feeling like things are out of control. And that, that can take over very easily. Yeah, yeah. And probably contributes to the lack of motivation that you were talking about. So maybe next week we can check in with that discussion yeah, a little bit. So anybody sure. who's struggling with motivation, stay tuned for next week. Bye, everyone. Okay. Bye.